Hello everyone. Ah, oh, classic. <laughs> Hello everyone. End of last year, I bought this new Google Pixel phone and also upgraded my DSLR to a Sony mirrorless camera. Question, can you spot the difference between the photos from this $1,000 phone and the photos from this $4,500 camera? If it's anything like the results we got last year, it might be much harder than you think. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Luc Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. I will take plenty of photos of the beautiful city of Vancouver, but to make this comparison more interesting, I won't tell you which photo was taken with which camera. Instead, I'm simply going to label them A and B. Stick to the end, I'll reveal the answer to this question. Before we start taking any of the comparison shots, let's talk about the devices and camera settings we're gonna be using. So first of all, we have my Google 6 Pro right here with its four lenses, and each lens produce about a 12 megapixel image in the end. Then we have my Sony a7S IV here with two lenses. So the first one is a 28 to 200, f2.8 to f5.6, and then we have my 17 to 28 at f2.8. The first thing we want to compare is the dynamic range in both of these cameras. If you don't know what is dynamic range, it's basically the amount of detail that you have inside of the dark parts and the bright side of the images. Smartphone cameras have become very good at producing very high dynamic range inside of images, so I wouldn't be surprised that my Google 6 Pro, if we take JPEG images on each camera, actually has more dynamic range inside of it. One feature where a smartphone has really tried to catch up to DSLR and mirrorless cameras is actually for the bokeh. If you don't know what bokeh is, it's a background blur inside of the images. And this is very important, especially in situations like this where I take pictures of people because you want to separate your subject and the background. This is called portrait mode instead of most phones because it allows to take better portrait of people. So let's test it out with my friend Nicholas right here. What do you think up to now? Do you know which one is camera A and which one is camera B? Let me know in the comments down below. One of the most underrated features of a mirrorless or DSLR cameras is actually the ability of being able to change some lenses. So on my Google 6 Pro, we actually only have three lenses. So we have one that's ultra wide at 17 millimeters. There's one that's 24 millimeter, which is a wide lens. And finally, there's a telephoto at four times zoom, which is about 100 millimeters. On my DSLR, we actually can stop and we can switch the lenses right here. So we can pick it up here. I can go in my bag and I have a second lens so I can really choose whichever lens is the best for the situation and this is very important actually for a situation like this where we had a beautiful sunset in the background here and I want to take some detailed shots on the mountain so I can use this lens which is a 28 to 200 to take some detailed shots but if I want I can simply come in my bag come here switch my camera to another lens in here and now we have a wide angle lens so I'm not limited to only these two lenses. I can actually choose much more lenses. I really can choose whatever the lens I want. So it really gives a lot of flexibility on which type of shots I can get in the end. And I'm not limited to the free options that I have inside of my phone. 
One of the downsides of having lenses is that they're actually usually pretty expensive. So you have to think about this when you're buying a camera. You cannot only buy the body, you also have to buy the lenses. So that's definitely the downsides. But in the end, you're gonna get sharp pictures throughout the whole range. We're just gonna be a problem on the phone because if you zoom in between, let's say two times zoom and four times zoom on my pixel, this is actually digital zoom and it doesn't look that good in the end. So if you can zoom physically with a lens, it's always gonna be better in the end. If we're talking about our next point, which is gonna be about taking some nice photos because the scanning is starting to come out and being really nice, I want to talk about the difference of ease of use versus customizability. So for a smartphone, it's very easy to use. You take it out of your pocket, it's always on me. I take a picture, all the processing is done for me, and I can get some great results very quickly. My DSLR instead is not as easy to use because I can change pretty much everything on it, but I can also customize everything. So this is a good point for DSLR. It's actually that it's super, super customizable. So I can really change any button on the camera. I can change things inside the menu to really get it to work exactly as I want. But these are very different tools for very different people. So it's really important to understand that they don't act the same way and that you cannot really compare them exactly because they're not trying to accomplish the same thing for everyone. Look at the view of the city in the background here. This is gonna be incredible shots tonight of the city. One of the things that impressed me the most inside of my comparison between my Google Pixel 4a and my DSLR was actually the night shots. So on my Google Pixel 4a, because it uses night sight, it gets some really sharp and detailed images, where it's really actually hard to get some night shots using the DSLR or mirrorless handheld, because the moment you take the shot, you have to be super steady to not get some blur inside of the images. On the Google Pixel 6 Pro and the Google Pixel 4a, they have a mode that's called Night Sight. It takes six images, merges them together to create a much more stable shot. Now, all of this changes if we go right here and we put the cameras on a tripod. On my DSR, I'm gonna be able to get some much better shots because I'm gonna be able to control the exposure and the ISO, so I'm gonna be able to go for longer exposure and get less noise inside of the images. Where here on the Pixel, we're seeing some of the limitations that we have. And because it's steady, it could go a little bit longer for the night shots, but it's not gonna change much inside of it in the end. This is lit. After passing way too much time on this edit, I decided to split this video into parts. In this first part, I'm gonna share a preview of my in-depth analysis, share which camera is which, and also share some bloopers at the end of this video. In the second part that's gonna be coming this Sunday, I'm gonna share an in-depth analysis and comparisons of the shots that I got with both of these cameras. Now is the time to hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell to be notified when that video comes out this Sunday. Again, this is one place where I think there's a very big difference. Uh, we're gonna see in the background of these images, these portrait images, we have much more details inside of the Google 6 Pro shot than the one on the Sony here. The Sony here has a hard time and just brings everything to almost pure white. Yes, I could go inside of Lightroom and try and edit these images and get a little bit more detail, uh, but straight out of the camera and quickly editing both of these, you get uh, these results. So this is pretty impressive that Google 6 Pro just by default has so much more information inside of the shot. One very impressive example here, again with portraits, I think a lot of times here, the Google 6 Pro just does a better job with portraits. Look at this background here, we basically have no information inside of this shot, but straight out of the Google 6 Pro, we can see right here, there's a lot more information inside of the sky, but we still see my friend Nicholas perfectly fine in the shot. If we look at these shots here, I think we see a huge difference between the two here. So this one is just warmer in general, where the pixel again, a little bit too blue to my taste. I don't know why they go so blue, because it definitely wasn't as blue uh, that day. It was probably more realistic on the Sony right here. Uh, and again here, I think the colors here on the Google shot are much more natural. It was a really nice sunset uh, with the light we had here on my friend Nicholas. Where here we just see that the Sony had a hard time with the highlights and just kind of lost the colors inside of the bright part of his face. Where here there's no at all um, lost inside of the colors here 
on the face on the Google 6 Pro. I was actually pretty impressed with the net shots right here uh, because I was expecting here the Google Pixel 6 Pro to have a much harder time with these types of shots where it's not clear what is the foreground and what is the background. Uh, they got almost everything perfectly right. The only thing right here is actually underneath the knee we didn't realize that this should be treated as a background, not be treated as the foreground. But on the side right here, it's very natural. They progressively add more and more blur to the background. So I was actually very impressed with these shots. And there's some cases like these ones where they don't look as good. So definitely here, you kind of see that a portrait mode is having a really hard time determining what is foreground, uh, what is the background, what should be sharp and not. Where here, the shot from the Sony camera just looks perfectly fine throughout because it's totally natural blur in the foreground, but also the background here. Uh, so that's different definitely one of the difference. So this is definitely an advantage of DSLRs is just how you can control the blur and you can get more or less as you want by controlling the settings on your cameras. Some of the most impressive results we got is actually for the shot here of my friend. So we can see here that on the Sony camera, there's too much noise and had a hard time retaining some detail inside of my friend. Where here, the photo on my Google 6 Pro is actually super sharp, detailed, uh, and just looks a lot better in my opinion. There's more detail inside of the shot and it was actually really dark. So it's kind of impressive how much detail they kept inside of the Google 6 Pro shot. Again, here with my two friends side by side, this one looks very good. Even though I tweaked some settings here to get some better results on the Sony, I still think the one from my Google Pixel 6 Pro kind of looks spreader. So it's very impressive. So now the big reveal, camera A was my Sony A7 IV camera and camera B was my Google 6 Pro. Did you get that right? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm very curious to know what you thought about this comparison. Are you the person that still uses a DSLR and mirrorless camera? Have you switched to only using your phone? Are you just starting out photography and take all your pictures using your phone? I'm very curious to know what you think. My goal wasn't to tell if this camera or this camera is better. That wasn't the goal at all. The goal was just to try and compare because I'm still very impressed how good phones have become in the last few years. I want to end this video by saying a big thank to my friends Trevor and Nicholas that helped me filming this video while we were on our trip in Vancouver. It wouldn't have been possible without both of them. If you enjoyed this video, definitely let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe for more content on photography and filmmaking. See you in the next one. Are we filming? Yeah, we're filming. Test one, two test. The microphone, yeah, the it microphone is, is working. working. It's good. And this $4,500 camera. I'm missing one line. Question, can you spot the difference between the phones from uh, the front of the, uh, between the <laughs> and upgraded to this Sony, uh, sorry. And the photos from the, uh, You were so close. I was so close, you I was so, so close. close. I should do a blooper channel. I think it would be more popular than the main channel. I have it recorded. <laughs> have no choice now. Uh-oh. It's in like me taking pictures of Nick. Uh, yeah, Trevor, I don't want to get <laughs> shot. Why you are. are you going around? <laughs> Rolling. One of the tests I were, uh, one of the tests I impressed, I need more water right now. So first of all, we have my Google Pixel 4 Ah, uh, Google Pixel 4 12 megapixel on all lenses. Ah, uh, lenses.